everybody. It's Eric Steele with Steel Wheels, and I'm here in Fort Laramie, Wyoming. I just uh, did a drive-by, kind of rolled through this this uh, National Historic Site last week. Um, wanted to get some footage of uh, Historic Site and put it up on my channel. And uh, one thing led to another, and I got involved in the permitting process, and I discovered that there was so much more to talk about when uh, discussing Fort Laramie, Wyoming. And that basically this fort here, Fort, fort Laramie, is the quintessential, it's the epitome of the Western experience. Um, there are a lot of other examples all across the West, but no, no fort, no single lo location can tell so many different stories through the perspective or the lens of that location. Um, just a few examples. The Treaty of Fort Laramie. This treaty was in 19, um, sorry, there were two treaties of Fort Laramie. One was in 1851. The next one was uh, in 1868. Um, we'll actually do a whole episode on the Treaty of Fort Laramie. But the end result of that treaty was the establishment of actual sovereign nations for, um, for the Native Americans. Um, this never really was the case before. This was the beginning of, of the whole Indian uh, agencies and, and um, that dark history. So that all started from here. Let's see, what else do we have? This is also where the Oregon Trail, the California Trail, the Mormon Trail, the Santa Fe Trail, the Bridger Trail, uh, and I think the Bozeman Trail uh, all ran through here. Um, there's on the Mormon Trail they had uh, hand carts, and uh, we'll do a whole episode talking about how hand carts worked, the logistics of hand cart. Um, let's see, we'll go on to the Mountain Man rendezvous that they used to have here. Um, these are just massive collections of trappers that would come together. The French, um, it was very very diverse uh, group of people. Uh, let's see what else. Day of day in the life of an enlisted man. We had several hundred enlisted men that were barracks at the uh, fort. Uh, we're definitely going to do a whole episode on what their life was like from you know when they woke up and what they did throughout the day. Let's see. Not to leave the officers out, there was a certain civility that had to come to the frontier if the officers were going to behave as officers, um, and so. What we'll find is uh, there are certain elements of refinement at the fort that you ne wouldn't necessarily expect on the frontier, but they went to great lengths to bring out some of the finer things in life so that um, they could they could enjoy them, and it wasn't just uh, doom and gloom of being on the on the frontier. They had to bring they brought culture with them uh, from the east, and uh, so we'll find violins and. Um, or fiddle, it depends on what you want to call it, uh, piano, um, music lessons, and there, there are some other uh, examples of uh, bringing in culture. Let's see, though, we also have the economics of the fort. How did that work? Because it wasn't just, uh, um, um, you know, communism or, uh, and things weren't just given away. Um, you know, you, you had to have, you had a, an account and uh, there was credit and there was, a, so how did all that work? Um, then after the fort went into uh, stop being used by the military, it still was used uh, as a dance hall and people would come from a hundred miles away for the dances that would happen here. So we're going to have something on that. Then there's also a, a whole episode I can do on how the rivers of the West, being the Arkansas, the, uh, the Platte, and, and the Missouri, all um, were highways, um, and uh, the routes that uh, settlement, the settlers used to migrate westward. And uh, each of these rivers has a significant story that goes along with the development of the West that follows that river along. And it just so happens that the Platte is one of the most notable ones because it's how people got to Oregon and how they got to uh, the, the Northwest. We'll also talk about why that was such a big deal for the U.S. government. Uh, we're also going to talk about railroads and the telegraph. They both also came through here. So when that was all getting laid down, this was part of it. And the Transcontinental Telegraph came right through here. Let's see. What else do we have? Uh, 
army logistics, tactics, and strategy. How did the army operate when they were here? What did they do? How did the cavalry operate? Uh, there's a lot of times we see cavalry in the, in the movies and they're riding in and they're fighting from horseback. Did that really happen? We're going to talk with people at the National Park Service and find out about that. Let's see what else we have. Pony Express. Tons of stories to tell about the Pony Express. Um, of course, be remiss if I didn't talk about the wildlife and the nature uh, and the seasons uh, of this area. I, I expect to be up here quite a bit, and I'm going to get a chance to see it all times of the year. And so that's going to be kind of interesting. Let's see. Um, one of the reasons I'm so enthusiastic about doing this this uh, series of videos is, um, is the fact that this historic site at uh, Fort Laramie has um, an amazing research library. It's probably some of the most obscure, and um, it's, a, it's just a really amazing research library. And as I get into, this pro into these projects and into these individual uh, episodes, I'll have an opportunity to engage with the research library and, um, and draw from it. To, uh, to build the episode. So I'm really looking forward to that. This is not something, you know, as much as they want to digitize things, this is not something that you really get online. You have to be here to kind of get it and put it together, give it some context. So that's, I'm excited about talking about the, the research library. And then we're also going to talk about medicine in the frontier. There was a doctor's office here. Oftentimes when people got here, they needed to see a doctor by the time they got here. The, the last fort, the the previous fort from here was 400 miles away. So any decent health care or whatnot, this was it. You didn't pass this by. This was not a location to be passed by. Let's see. We also have uh, justice in the frontier. There happened to be a brig or uh, a jail right there on the fort. So they had to lock people up. And we're talking about kids in the West. There were kids here too, you know. I mean, so we have a school here. What was it like for the kids? So we'll do a whole episode on that. Oh, boy. There's a whole bunch of other ones. Um, wagon train logistics. What happened during the decline and restoration of the fort? Um, you know, uh, we'll do, maybe do an episode about the programs that they have here at the fort because they have a ton of programs here. Um, let's see. And then there's a bunch of other Native American stories that um, that really you can't talk about the fort without talking about the Sioux. The Cheyenne, the Northern Cheyenne, the Northern Arapaho, the Pawnee, the Crow, um, and there's a few other tribes in there that I'm not mentioning, um, not because I don't want to. Just, just I'm not the expert on this stuff. I've been looking for something like this, um, a project nobody else is really working on, um, a project with a lot of different angles to it, a project with a lot of different sub stories to it to do to work on as a longer form piece um as a result of coming out and kind of stumbling through initially filming here without permission uh, which don't do that uh, th there's a permit process it's really easy um they were very nice and explained to me what i what steps i needed to do and i told them what i wanted to do and uh, let's just long story short um, I'll be able to access all the resources I, I want to access. Um, there's really very few limitations as to what uh, I can do on site. Um, none of the things that I, I, I can't do, uh, I had any desire to do, like fly a drone or take over the site to bring in a bunch of actors or some junk like that. And that's kind of really what they want to make sure. But, but the upside of it is... Um, that I'll have an opportunity to actually interview the experts from the from Fort Laramie on each of these subjects uh, as I'm developing these stories, uh, which is fantastic. Um, so <laughs> bear in mind, this is complex stuff, and I'm not going to get it right all the time. I'm just going to do my best at letting the people who are here tell the story that they have to tell. That said, even the bridge that I'm, I'm sitting in front of, um, is not without controversy. Uh, this came right on the heels of the treaty with the Fort Laramie. And in that treaty, in that treaty, everything west of the Missouri River in South Dakota was given to the Lakota. So that's the Black Hills. And this bridge 
was built um, for commercial reasons, to provision the miners that were going to the Black Hills looking for gold. This was done, even though there was a treaty that said that everything that happened in the Black Hills was under the purview of the Sioux, almost as soon as that treaty was signed, they were building a bridge and, 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 and working out how to get miners up there and to make sure they had enough food and coffee and beans for, for uh, their time in the field, um, picks and shovels and axes and all, all the stuff that's needed to provision miners. So there's no, um, I'm still fascinated by this stuff, even if it's, um, you know, sometimes it's kind of dark what happened. I'm still very fascinated by it. And I think that it's, it's our history. It's worth telling. And um, happy me, I, I get to tell it for a while. So this is great. This would be a project for me to work on. So I've been looking for something longer form to do. Clearly, I've got a bunch of different story ideas for uh, to, to cover about the West through told from the perspective of people at Fort Laramie from, from this historical site. There's so many resources here. Um, yeah, it's a really great place to come visit. So if you're a history buff, I hope this gives you a reason to come out here and, uh, and check out the site. Uh, check out how accessible all this is. Um, this is a, a fantastic, uh, fantastic place to come check out. The research library is amazing. So I'm looking forward to getting a chance to work with that and also to meet some of the experts that can talk with me about the different uh, story ideas that I've, I've presented. So I'm um, going to go home, going to pick a few of those story ideas and start working on them, uh, writing scripts for them, and then head back up here, film those, and put those together, and uh, we'll just go from there. All right. Sounds like the cold train's on its way. That's eastbound, so that's loaded with holes westbound right they're empty so these uh there's only one track that comes through here and they have to alternate trains going each direction it's pretty pretty interesting little town very quiet and up at the end, end of the north platte river valley uh before things get kind of dry so all right well that's it thanks for listening to me uh this is eric here at uh the U.S. Army Bridge, of course, I'm at the state historical marker for the U.S. Army Bridge, Old Army Bridge over the Platte River. It was built in 1875. The purpose of this bridge was to connect Cheyenne to the gold fields in, Black, in the Black Hills. All right, well, based on all those story ideas I threw at you, I think you can see that I've got a lot of stuff I can focus on. Um, 